Suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting, and it appeared unto them cloven tongues like fire that sat upon their heads. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. I'm so happy that you're tuning in with these programs and learning the Word of God. I've been doing a series on prayer, and today we're going to continue in that series on prayer. So if you have a Bible today, we're going to begin at 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'd like to pray for you today. Father, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you for their families, their household, their children, Lord. I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of the Son of God to be imparted into them, the eyes of their understanding to be illuminated by the Holy Spirit, that they know and understand the great hope of your calling, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the riches of your glory, the inheritance in the saints exceeding greatness of your power, Lord, to those who believe. And I just want to thank you again for coming and learning the Word of God. And we're going to begin in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 8. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men notice the scripture made for all men verse 2 for the for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. That's the will of God for the believer, to live in godliness and a peaceable life. Verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So it's good and acceptable when you pray for leadership, for those that are in authority because those are the ones that the devil tries to divide and destroy where there's division and when there's no unity you see the enemy at work the prince and the power of the air works in the sons of disobedience the sons of disobedience are those that do not have a relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Their relationship is in philosophy or opinion, the opinions of men. But there's no fear of God before their eyes. And when there's no fear of God in a leader, there's no changes in that leader. So the fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. The fear of God, men depart from evil. When there's no departing from evil, what God calls evil, all you have is people in authority living in pride and arrogancy, trying to do their own will, but not submitting to the will of the Father. When you truly submit to the will of the Father, you've received His Son, Jesus Christ, because He came forth from the Father into this world, and He took your place upon the cross of Calvary and bore your iniquity and your shame and your guilt, and He wiped your sin away when He remitted your sin by the shedding of His blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He had power to lay his body upon the cross and take it up again. He received that commandment from his Father. God the Father raised Jesus from the dead 
on the third day. And he ever lives to make intercession for you. We're going to go through those scriptures in Hebrews. Jesus is now our apostle and high priest of our confession before the Father. So when we pray, we pray in line with the word of God. We pray to the Father in Jesus' name because the Father highly exalted his son Jesus, gave him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows in heaven, every knee bow upon the earth, and every knee will bow under the earth and declare Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We're going to continue on in verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. In the sight of God our Savior. There's only one Savior. His name is Jesus. Christ the Lord. He is the highly exalted one at the right hand of power of the Father. All power has been given to him in the heavens and the earth. Verse 4, who will have all men to be saved? So it's the will of God to have all men to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, the Lord. He is the mediator between God and men, Christ Jesus, the Lord, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Verse 7, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles, in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Now, Apostle Paul, this letter was written to Timothy and to the leaders. He was exhorting them in the Lord, the proper way of praying, because they had a position of leadership in the church. So the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to be a, a church of great prayer, a seeking God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son and the Holy Ghost. God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. All three agree in one. They're co-equal. They're all eternal, sharing the same nature, the eternal Son of God. Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. He put on a human body. He was born of a virgin, born under the law to redeem those that were under the law. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He answered the law in your place at the cross. No one could keep the Ten Commandments. They were held guilty. If you broke one commandment, you were guilty of breaking all the commandments. The first commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. When you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you are a, a doer of God's word. You've received his word into your heart. Your heart has been circumcised by the Spirit of Christ. When God's spirit comes on the inside of your spirit, you're regenerated, you're being born again. 
You're coming to the knowledge of the truth of the Son of God. There's no other Savior, no other Redeemer, but the Lord Jesus Christ. He saves you to the uttermost to those who come unto God. He came forth from the Father into this world and he went back to the Father. And now he's seated in a place of great authority at the right hand of the Father. And he poured out the Holy Spirit of God, the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost, upon the church. And the early church were in the upper room in Jerusalem waiting for the promise of the Father, which Jesus spoke about. He said, go to Jerusalem and you're going to be endued or clothed with the power from on high. He gave them a commission to preach repentance and remission of sins to all the nations, but beginning at Jerusalem. You can find that in Luke 24, verse 49. And when the apostles and the mother of our Lord and disciples went to Jerusalem. Jesus said, you're going to receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And you are going to be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's found in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So they were worshiping God in that upper room in Jerusalem. On the day of Pentecost, it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And it appeared like cloven tongues of fire that sat upon their heads, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues or dialects as the Spirit gave utterance. The Spirit of the living God gave utterance. There was devout Jewish men of other nations under heaven that day. They heard the sound and they heard these men of Galilee speaking in their own native dialect the wonderful things of God. They said, What meaneth this? And Peter stood up with the eleven and lifted up his voice and said, These are not drunk, as you suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And upon my servants and upon my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. He said, You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you with miracles, signs, and wonders, and he said, you have taken him and crucified him, but God raised him up. So there was a sound that went throughout Jerusalem, and it came from heaven, a very distinct sound, that all that were in Jerusalem heard that sound. It was the power of the Holy Spirit and it filled that whole place. The Holy Spirit proceedeth from the Father. The Holy Spirit is the gift. Peter said, you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost after you repent. Because they cried out, what do, how do we get saved? He said, repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they were baptized in water. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And God added to the church daily those who are to be saved. 
They weren't coming to a church. They became the church. They were called out by God Almighty. When you're called out by God, you're called out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. And the indwelling Spirit of Christ enters your heart by the Holy Ghost. You become born of the Spirit, washed in the blood of Jesus, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You're bought and paid for by Jesus Christ, the justifying blood of Christ. He imputes his righteousness to those who believe. So you cannot merit eternal life. You cannot earn eternal life. It's by grace, God's grace, that you're saved. Through faith, not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. It's the gift of God because Jesus paid the penalty of our sins in his own body on the cross. And by his stripes we are healed. God the Father exalted him. Jesus appeared to his apostles and disciples for 40 days and to the 500 before he ascended to the Father. And when he ascended to the Father, you can read that in Acts chapter 1. The angels of the Lord were there when he ascended. And they said, the same way you see him ascending into heaven is the same way he's coming back. There's a pointed time of the Heavenly Father for when Jesus comes back. And when he comes back, he's coming back with a shout of an archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ will rise first and those that are alive will be caught up together with the Lord. They will ever be with the Lord that's found in Thessalonians. The power of God will come through the graveyards. People that have been buried, serve the Lord all their life. Their graves will open up. The resurrection of the dead. They'll take on a glorified body just like Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. See, the Lord came back for you, spirit, soul, and physical body, that you will ever be with the Lord. It's your spiritual inheritance from God Almighty. Adam sinned in the garden against God. And sin brought spiritual separation in the garden. It brought and resulted in a physical death and judgment. So you have the kingdom of darkness, the prince and power of the air that works in the sons of disobedience, and you have the kingdom of Almighty God. The kingdom of Almighty God is a victorious kingdom. It's a kingdom of might. It's a kingdom of authority. It's a kingdom of power. That's why when Jesus in his earthly ministry, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon me, for he hath anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty those who are bound, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That acceptable year of the Lord was a year of jubilee. That's found in Leviticus chapter 25. And he put the, the book down and he read out of Isaiah 61, and he said, this is fulfilled in your ears. That was in his own hometown of Nazareth. 
And so the spirits of darkness that were in people, unclean spirits, began to cry out. We know who you are. You are the son of the most high God. They acknowledged who he was. Why do you come to torment us before our time? See, the devil was tormenting mankind. The devil is against God. He wants to be worshipped. That's his goal. He blinds the mind and the heart of those that don't believe the gospel. The gospel is the most powerful message in this world today, the message of the cross of Christ. The message of the cross of Christ, where redemption was paid at Golgotha for the souls of mankind. He's calling every nation to repent. He's calling every government to repent. He's calling every people group to repent. Repent and believe the gospel. Believe the good news, how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life can come into your heart today. Eternal life can be inside your heart today. It's forsaking your sins and turning your heart to Christ. You will ever be filled with the Spirit of God's Son. Your heart will take on a, a huge change because He will take out the stony heart, the heart of unbelief, the heart that was against God, and he'll put in you a brand new heart. He'll sprinkle clean water on your heart. You will be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. As far as the east is from the west so far, he will remove your sin from you. It will not be remembered. The desires of God Almighty will enter your heart by the Holy Ghost. You will become a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ. When those desires come in, the call of God comes in. He calls you. He calls you unto himself. And he reveals his great mercy to you. Because you were dead in your sins, Christ died for you. He was risen again for your offenses to deliver you. Sin offends God. He came to reconcile you to the Father in himself. And when he reconciled you, it's through every drop of blood that came off of his body. It was holy blood not tainted with sin. He is the eternal Son of God. He is the author of eternal life. He is the only one that can change your heart when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be gloriously saved by him. It's nothing you could earn, nothing you can merit, because all that is filthy rags before God. His righteousness, his righteousness will be imputed into you. When the Father looks at you, he sees the blood that was applied to your soul. And if you are on your deathbed, you were taking your last breath, you would be with the Lord. The Bible says, absent from the body is present with the Lord. Those that reject Jesus Christ and reject eternal life, in Christ through the cross, through the blood sacrifice, and through the resurrection. If you reject him, it's eternal damnation. He gave us a commission to preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So when Apostle Paul was exhorting Timothy 
to pray for those that are in authority. It was good and acceptable before God Almighty. Who will have, 1 Timothy 2.4, who will have all men to be saved to come unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus the Lord, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time, where unto I am ordained a preacher, an apostle, and I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Apostle Paul stood before kings and the children of Israel and the Gentile nations. He was called and chosen vessel to bear the Lord's name, and he would suffer many things for his name's sake. And he suffered a lot of persecution. But he was called by God to open their eyes from darkness to the light, from the power of Satan to the power of Almighty God. He preached the cross where redemption was paid for in Christ Jesus. He preached the victory of the blood of Jesus. He preached the victory of the cross of Christ. He said, I determined not to know anything among you but Jesus Christ and him crucified. That your faith shall not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of Almighty God. That power was through the blood of Jesus. That power was through the resurrection of Jesus. The power of God can enter your heart today by forsaking your sins and acknowledging the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and that he is the redeemer of your soul he came to save you from your sins. This can be the best day in your life by coming fully to Christ and giving your heart to him. Thank you so much for watching Times of Refreshing. God bless you. Thank you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.